Alright guys, welcome back to another mCrater tutorial. Today what we're going to be looking at is a basic uh, door system using a um, basically a sensor uh, eye scanner kind of thing. Basically what you uh, can do is set up like a door system very similar to this which will make a uh, door turn on and off. So basically when the door is um, active it will be closed using the inverter. Uh, it then pushes out a red zone signal from a couple blocks uh, that will be on either side of the door. So basically that's the system. There's wires that go through here and that help uh, it basically extend the door part on the uh, that piston. So we just look at the small block and basically it triggers the block to turn on which updates the block behind it and then it will basically go ahead and um, change the signal to um, basically extend or retract. So basically um, it's a very simple system for redstone. So let's get into it. Uh, there are a couple blocks. There's one for the smaller block. That one handles the ray tracing. And then we have two other blocks which handle the redstone. So they're basically just blocks that are behind it that get updated. Uh, there are a few different procedures um, that basically get triggered. Uh, this is the ray tracing one. It, I'll cover how to basically build it all on today's video. It'll be a little bit longer. So um, my apologies. Uh, you can I'll make sure to add uh, chapters so you guys can easily seek out the parts that you need. So. All right, starting with the block, you need uh, the north, uh, east, south, west direction, not up and down. And then there are some other properties you can set up here. Uh, these are pretty much however you want to set them, though no redstone on these ones. You will need MBT data, and uh, then you're going to have an update tick and a couple break conditions. These are the break conditions for the smaller block. So we want to drop the, the block at the location. So let's build this quickly. We need to get the four directions set up and then we need to add a direction test. And then we're going to grab a, a nearest block and then we're going to basically offset the coordinates of the drop location so we can set that up. But we need a drop block from the tab there. And then we're going to basically update the blocks uh, location and drop uh, position. So uh, you'll do that for all of these ones. And basically you can pause and look at the video or look at the thing. Uh, the, the procedures will also be included in the workspace. So uh, you guys uh, can get those. Uh, all right. So the next thing that we have is the, I believe this is the actual script for changing the block behind it. So this is going to be triggering based on the ray tracing um, at the top there, as you can see, it's basically telling it, okay, is the player looking at it? And if it, they are, then it's going to trigger um, a couple things to happen. It's going to update the block to turn on uh, the smaller block. And then it's going to set a delay time for how long it should be active for. And then after what we're doing is we're just setting the direction again and testing for each direction and then basically updating the block behind it, um, which will be the same direction that the block is facing. So basically both of these blocks have rotation. So what we're doing is we're basically turning both of these blocks on in the top part of the script. The bottom part of the script basically turns both blocks off but you need to basically offset the location and all that. Uh, down below, it's basically just testing if the script is zero. So if the timer is zero, so we would go ahead and set a MBT test here, and then we're going to get the delay. And then what we need is a number block at the end there. And then we're going to make sure that it's set to equal to zero. And if this is true, then we're going to go ahead and update all this stuff to the off state. So basically you do that for all your directions as well. And then underneath the uh, delay for that delay con condition, what you want to do is you want to decrease the time for the delay uh, by one. So every tick, it will basically lower the timer by one until it reaches zero. So that's basically what you're doing. And then you'd set up your uh, ray tracing script there. So next, uh, let's cover the ray tracing script. Uh, this part is a little bit 
straightforward. It looks a lot more complicated than it is. Uh, we have a local variable that is for distance. This is going to control every block's uh, distance that we need, uh, including the player's distance. So we can adjust this accordingly. Um, then what we need to do is we need to create an if statement and we're going to go ahead with uh, the nearest entity. And then what we need to do is after we test for that, what we need to do is select the player. So once the player is selected, we need to set the distance to the distance that we set above. Uh, once we've done that, we can basically apply a, another variable for entities and we're going to apply the same properties as our test above to that entity uh, variable. So it simplifies the script a little bit. Then what we need to do is make four if else statements or basically conditions that we can make. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add five and states uh, and operators. Basically what this will do is allow us to test for both directions and then the ray tracing for the entity. Now the nearest entity is going to be the entity that we just tested for. That's why we're using the variable. We want these last two states to be the default ones. And we're going to use the entity for all these blocks. Um, so it's just basically targeting and uh, we want to test for the blocks rotation. And then what we need to do is we need to test for the entity's rotation. So again, we don't want the near uh, target uh, slash event entity. We want the uh, event entity variable. So we're going to go ahead and set the opposite and then get the blocks direction. So basically if they're facing the opposite direction as the block, then we want to make sure that the player uh, can update it. So the next thing that we need to do is set up the actual ray tracing script. At the moment, we only are testing if the block exists there. Uh, we still need to update all the directions for X, Y, and Z. So we're basically testing right now if the block that we're looking at is the same block that is running the script. So if this is the case, then what we want to do is we want to go ahead and um, update the or basically return true. So once we've done that, what we need to do is have a logic variable and each one of these has a logic variable of true. Uh, by default, it will be false. So what we can do is we can just basically add these to the conditions. And then at the very end, what we're doing is we're going to return that value of that variable. So it's going to do that. So that's all that this variable is doing. So, or this procedure is doing, it's just testing for the ray tracing for the player. And again, that's going into the update tick for the block, which is going to test for all the ray tracing for the entity. Uh, the next thing that we have is uh, the other block settings. So this, the default one, the off one, um, this can, all the properties can be the same. Just make sure the redstone is off on this one. And then what we have is the block added. So basically what we're doing here is this is going to be your main block for basically placing the two blocks down. We're testing for error uh, and the direction first. And then we're going to apply the off state smaller block as well as set the rotation for it. So I ended up forgetting to do uh, all the rotation and testing for error for the other one. So I just quickly updated that right now and it'll be included in the end result for the export for the procedures as well. So basically uh, same thing that we're doing. If it's not basically um, going to be returning true for any of these conditions, we want to break the block uh, so it doesn't uh, stay in the world. Um, this is important because it needs to uh, be there uh, like an air block needs to be there in order to place the other one. That way it doesn't uh, destroy any blocks in the world. Uh, for example, it could be used to manipulate bedrock or something like that. So that wouldn't be good. Um, so basically this is just the condition that you would set up. You would just test for error. And then once your condition is true, you basically set the same distance for the, uh, the offset as the test for error. You need to check both boxes and make sure that the block is for the off position of the smaller block. And then basically just set up the direction. And um, you would basically go ahead and you could even get the same block direction um, of the current block, which is basically what I did with the other one. Or you could specify the direction yourself, uh, but it should match the same. 
And then lastly, it would basically just drop the block. All right, so the other one is for the large block. Uh, when it's uh, destroyed, it's going to remove the smaller block. And this is basically just a copy of the other procedure that we had our testing for the block's location. And then we want to use this uh, XYZ tester for the block because it doesn't support uh, the block state. So that's important for these kinds of procedures. Uh, we're going to set the north direction and then we're going to go ahead and remove block and then we need to update the position with offsetting the coordinates accordingly. So the coordinates are actually x is negative z, south is positive, east is positive, and west is negative. So again, those are all the procedures for the uh, property. There's just one thing that you need redstone on your on state for your large block and set the uh, connect the two checkboxes and stuff like that. So that's pretty much all the script that you need for actually getting this thing working. I'll provide the workspace on the uh, examples, mCreators examples. It's kind of an advanced project, so I'll make sure to include it here. You can go to the discussions under the projects one, and then what it will be is somewhere in there. You, if you can't see it, then just do a quick search at the top there and search for um, eye scanner, and it should come up just fine. So it'll be under the yellow tab for sure. Outside of that, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out. Thank you.